For the 17th time in the last 21 years, the Dallas Mavericks have clinched a playoff spot. This is a pretty nice milestone. It's a pretty nice indication that your franchise is not just completely inept. But at the same time, it comes in this case on the back of a, let's say, sloppy game. Dallas beat Toronto 114-110 to last night, and it was, especially that second half, ugly. Ugly, ugly, sloppy basketball. Toronto wasn't playing any of their top players, and Dallas just looked like they did not take them seriously, which is frustrating to see because you know with two wins, you would clinch the fifth seed. A single win would clinch the playoffs and avoid a play-in scenario altogether. It was crucial as a result to get wins. And with Toronto playing none of its none of its key players and then having the final game against the Timberwolves, you have every reason you, you are in the driver's seat to clinch the five seed. So for Dallas to mess around and let Toronto cut it multiple times to two points in the closing minutes is really, really inexcusable, but all the same... They do get the win. They do have some good things to talk about here. Before they just completely disengaged and stopped trying, Dallas did largely take care of business. They were up handily for a good stretch, and you got another good game out of KP. 21 points, 10 rebounds. This was about 34 minutes of action for him, so a healthier dose of minutes and still solid numbers, a double-double in that regard, 20 points. I think he was about 9 of 19 from the field. That's good. What I want to see is him do it now against higher level competition because the last couple games, you haven't had to worry about that. The Pelicans in that game didn't have Zion. So KP's return, good. He's looked good so far, but we haven't seen him have to go against the the top starter level quality players that you're going to have to contend with in the playoffs. That said, at the very least, he's doing well here in this case. Luka got himself a triple-double as well, 20 points, 11 assists, and 10 boards. This was one of those games from Luka where he just didn't, to me, look dialed in. He, he was sloppy with a lot of his play. You know, he has that. He gets ripped by... Who was it that ripped him at the end? Flynn? I, I am unfamiliar with... Was it Malachi Flynn? Didn't know anything about him before, and he's ripping Luka in a clutch situation and getting a transition layup that cuts the lead, I think, to four at the time or something like that. Way, way too close. In the end, Dallas puts the game away at the foul line behind Josh Richardson, a guy shooting, I think, 91% from the free throw line this year. Richardson's not going to contend for the distinctions on that list because he hasn't taken enough free throws this year but it was still good to see in that situation him go to the line four straight times and ice the game because Dallas was giving up way too much man Nick Nurse is a good coach he drew up some good inbound plays for them under the basket but Dallas just sloppy sloppy down the stretch even on the jump ball Luka tries to tap it back to Dwight Powell and Luka gets a little more mustard on it so to speak than he wanted but Powell delays his reaction it's like he thought the Raptor was the last one to touch it, and so he wasn't even going to go after it. And so you get a situation where Toronto gets an inbound right under the basket and gets a great pass uh, to... I'm trying to remember who it was. It was who KP was guarding in that situation. Might have been Johnson. But uh, he gets there, and KP gets a good hard foul on him, makes him go to the line and earn it, but he does knock down both free throws. And at that point, it cut to two. And that's where you're just looking at it. It's just like, oh, okay, guys, what are we doing? What are we doing? It was rough. But you had good effort. You had you had them at least closing out, right? This is the kind of game in the two years previous that they would have found a way to lose. And instead, they get the job done. You get another quality game. Dorian Finney-Smith hit a big three late in this game as well that pushed the lead, I think, up to, uh, what was it, six or eight at the time. He ends with 17 points on six of eight shooting. He continues to be a very, very viable weapon for this team. He was four of six from three as well. So 
very, very productive there. Brunson had himself a good game as well. 8 of 11 from the field for 19 points. Also fills up the stat sheet a little bit with 5 boards and 4 assists. Very, very good on that front. There's things about this game that frustrate me. A lot of it has to do with the same problems we've been talking about, and that's them playing up or down to their competition. The silver lining there is what we've always talked about, and that is there aren't going to be teams that you have to play down to in the playoffs. In the West especially, everybody top to bottom is comparable. Even if one of those teams from the play-in tournament gets in, let's say like a 9 or a 10 seed gets in, all right, you're going to be dealing with Memphis or you're going to be dealing with, I believe it's Golden State. Let me take a look at this here. Uh, The current race on that front is... Oh, I hit schedule. That's why. (laughs) Uh, The 9 and 10 right now are Grizzlies and Spurs, actually. So Golden State is 8 in that case. So, all right. I didn't even... I'm not so worried about San Antonio. We have seen Dallas mess around with them a little more than they should as well. But Memphis just ran you off the court in the second half recently. And the game before that, when you played them, it took the one of the most incomparable Luka buzzer beaters to win. Otherwise, you lose that game as well. So Memphis should have your attention. The, the last game kind of suggested they didn't. But I think now at some point you have to look at it. Of course, I thought the same thing after losing twice to Sacramento. Like, okay, surely you get it now, right? This is a bad team, but they have your number for some reason. And the third game indicated that no, no, they have in fact not learned their lesson. But I don't want to deal with one of them. You're not going to have to deal with one of them because not only would they have to make the play-in tournament, they would have to make a deep run to get to you because if you are the five or the six that means they're not only getting into the tournament they're having to knock off uh one or two of these teams above you which is just not going to happen so all the same you're not going to have to worry about the up or down to your competition thing in the postseason you would assume i want to see what dallas is able to do as it stands right now dallas is the five seed and they've got a full game lead on that like I said, can clinch it with a win or a Blazers loss uh, in this next game. And I don't know when Portland's next game is. That's actually interesting in itself. Let me see that. Do they play tonight? No, no Portland tonight. I think the NBA scheduled these. Like, Not only are they all on the same final day, but I think they're pretty much going at the same time. Yeah, Blazers play at 8 o'clock tomorrow. And the Mavericks play at 8 o'clock. So there you go. You can't scoreboard watch and know the Mavericks are going to have to go into that game at Minnesota fully dialed in. But this is a 22-48 and 48 Minnesota team. Dallas should be able to take care of business and lock up that five seed. And as the standings are right now, that would mean Dallas playing against... Um, playing against... The Clippers, as it stands right now, the Nuggets have moved up, in fact, because of their three-game win streak and the Clippers are losing. So that's interesting. I was thinking if you got the five seed, odds are you were going to get the Nuggets, but there has been a, a shift in the upper echelon of the standings, and now you're looking at that situation. I think in the case of the matchup, I'd rather deal with the Nuggets. I know you're going to have the MVP this year, and Jokic on that team, and he's phenomenal. But I think without Murray, who averaged like 26 points per game in the bubble last year and was just an assassin in the postseason, I think with him gone, you look at it and you say, all right, so it's my one superstar against their one superstar. And if KP's healthy, that's another very viable weapon. Plus, Denver is a team that is a little bit of a slower pace, they're, they're a very good half-court defensive team and everything. They force turnovers, but Dallas doesn't commit a lot of turnovers. Dallas, with Luka Doncic in the fold, has been in the, I think, generally the top three fewest turnovers per game uh, each year in the league. In fact, the last year, I think they were number one or number two. So Dallas doesn't turn the ball over a lot. They're not a fast pace team themselves so playing against a team that's not going to force them into that territory is good Denver again with Jokic the MVP phenomenal 
uh, Michael Porter Jr. That he he's might not be Murray, but he's still a very dangerous weapon for them, and his usage has obviously gone up since Murray's injury. There's a lot to contend with there, and Aaron Gordon, of course. There's a lot to contend with there, but I still feel a little less leery of it than I do with the Clippers. The Clippers, for whatever reason, I, I've heard Mark Followell talk about he doesn't think they have the same necessarily grittiness and toughness, what we call dirty play last year in the playoffs, and don't get it twisted. It was very physical, dirty play, cheap shot, not just the Marcus Morris shots on um, on Luka Doncic or anything like that and hitting him in the head or stepping on his ankle or anything. There's just that sort of edge to a Doc Rivers team. And Doc Rivers isn't there now. They've also had some change out with some personnel. Serge Ibaka came back from a 30-game absence. I don't know how he looked in their, in their first game back. I'll be honest with you, he's been out injured so long, has Serge Ibaka, that I honestly forgot that he was on the Clippers. <laughs> That's another one of those guys that you're like, oh, good grief. Man, they lost to Houston. Wow. So when I was doing this show yesterday, I was talking about, oh, there's no way they're going to drop off because I was like, there's no way they're going to drop off because their final two games are not hard, but they just lost at Houston by seven. How did Ibaka do in this game? 17 minutes, 15 points, seven rebounds, six of eight from the field, three of four. Serge Ibaka is still so good for them, man. I, I've said for a while I would love to have Ibaka in Dallas, but yeah, it's uh, that's going to be a weapon you're going to have to contend with. Man, they played Kawhi Leonard. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. They did not play any of their guys. I saw Kennard, and for whatever reason in the box score, my brain just went uh, d dyslexic and defaulted to Kawhi Leonard. No, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I was like, there's no way they played in this game Kawhi Leonard that much. They didn't play Leonard at all. So I guess that's how they fell into that situation. Hey, shout out to Yogi Ferrell. I didn't even realize he was on the Clippers. He played 30 minutes, 2 of 10 from the field, 6 points, 4 and 4. Mavs legend Yogi Ferrell. Those were lean years. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup for Dallas, regardless of who they draw. I still would prefer i think denver but i understand there's people who say that this isn't the same clippers team as last year so even though you might have the rivalry and something like that it's maybe not as formidable in their opinion i don't want to get back to that because i want to i don't want to have to worry about the that mental aspect of it for some of the younger guys on the team where they're wrapped up in it right like if they're playing the clippers and morris takes a shot at Luca's head or something in game one. I don't want Luca out of his game because he's thinking about last year. I don't know if that would be the case. I would certainly hope not, but we'd have to see. So anyway, to summarize here, Mavericks have clinched a playoff spot. They are at the very least the sixth seed. It was an ugly win, but nevertheless, they clinch a playoff spot for the 17th time in 21 years. It is, I think, their 23rd playoff appearance in franchise history. That's a 41-year history, by the way. Appropriate. It's a 40, year 41 here. Uh, just the Dirk angle and everything. I wish they had done some. I mean, I know they got his silhouette on the court shooting the one-legged fadeaway, and Luka's made that his beacon of his implementing the one-legged fadeaway as well. He always lines up with it, it seems like. But all the same... It's a, it's a good milestone for this team. They're finishing better than they did last year, and they look better right now than they were last year. So growth is there. We just need to see how they can execute in the postseason. But that's it for my time, guys. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.